Hello, thank you very much for joining us for another video. I'm your host, Adon Tron from Nerd Tots. We're going to talk about a new movie today. Uh, an, well, technically an old movie called Black Lion. Uh, this movie came out in 1992. It is from the creator Golden Nagai. He's done other projects like Cutie Honey, Devil Man, uh, Devil Man Lady, Grandizer, Get a Robo. He's worked on both mangas and animes. Now, this is going to be a short one. Uh, the movie is only really like 44, 45 minutes long. So if you don't want any spoilers, do like our usual look below, see the description, skip ahead, and we'll go to our review without the spoilers for you. Now, the movie starts off with a quick notation showing that it is set in the year 1580, and you're opening intro to a battle scene in Japan where you have these soldiers being essentially massacred and they make an announcement it's raining that should slow down the opposing army because they can't handle the rain and the the riflemen can't shoot and as soon as they make that statement they get shot um and you see these like soldiers like cyborg super soldier samurais with these gatling guns just wailing on everybody then missile rockets are coming in and laser cannons are being shot and they're just decimating the entire village and apparently all these soldiers are being led by obu Na uh, nobunaga i believe is the name how you pronounce it sorry if i mispronounce it and we get introduced to our main character of the movie Shisha, uh, shishi maru you can tell he's our main character because a he's like the loudest one and b he wears a red outfit so it makes him stand out amongst everybody else at first he seems like a character who has his head on his shoulders because he says we're losing we must retreat and as soon as he sees our main antagonist who's called Janai, Janai, Janai Doma, the immortal ninja killer. I'm just going to say it like that right now because they mentioned that a dozen times. When As soon as he sees him, he goes, I changed my mind. I can't go. I must fight him. Uh, not so many words, but he basically says that. And right off the bat, you can tell why they say he's an immortal ninja killer. This guy is devastating all the ninjas that come his way he gets stabbed with swords the swords break he bleeds he doesn't stop he just keeps going our main hero gets wrecked right off the get-go sees what i suspect is to be like his girlfriend or secret love get destroyed in front of him too because she's trying to save his life and janai kills all the other ninja and then we get introduced to two other ninjas who show up and with their clan i believe their clan is the koga ninja clan and they save shishimaru at which point we see an old man in front of a high-tech computer rig and he starts talking about how time is not going the way it should be this nobunaga is operating in a different capacity than he should be uh how and they do a quick flashback where they show uh this old man was used to be a ninja and he witnessed nobunaga be like uh, transition from like an innocent kid and then for lack of a better term gets possessed and he becomes the nobunaga we know today who's like this general whose main goal is just to kill everybody doesn't care if it's an ally or uh enemy he just wants them dead they don't really establish why but that's all he wants and then we quickly find out that this old man who's working on the computers and he explains that the technology shouldn't be here. Uh, he's working for like a time control department, like as a secret agent. But at the same time, he's leading the same ninja clan that Shishimaru is a member of, but in secret. Uh, well, he's he's the leader. He's a secret agent for the time a department. Next thing comes in is after Shishimaru wakes up, he's still bandaged up, but he decides to interrupt a meeting of the head ninja, for lack of a better term, and he declares that he's going to kill Janai Doma. And the other ninjas that saved him basically told him to slow his roll because he's like super cocky and they're telling him you need to calm down like we all need to work together or we're not gonna get this job done and he's like i'll do this you guys keep your mouth shut and stay out of this they don't match too well now i'm paraphrasing the entire situation of course but the old man that i was telling you earlier he actually is very adamant about keeping shishimaru still in the plant he has faith that 
he will actually do well for taking out Janai. Doesn't explain why. So while everybody is opposed from it, another elderly ninja decides to step up and be the guy to Shishimaru, like, watch over him. He, he's confident he can handle his attitude. After Shishimaru has left, they pan over to another ninja who apparently was spying and Janai Doma tracks him down, kills him, and again, another display of why he's like the immortal ninja killer. His face is like cut in a way where like part of his head has been severed while fighting this ninja, and he just puts it right back in place. And his dialogue, I should mention his dialogue throughout the entire movie is pretty one note. He's like, ninja, die ninja, you should all die, you weak ninja. So he doesn't really add to the dialogue too much but in that moment of that scene where he's putting his face on they do a flashback where they show that he died at the hands of ninjas and when he died his family was killed in front of him too and what happened was he wakes up and his body is being put together you get a glimpse of like what was putting his body together but you don't know if it's aliens or just super scientific you know sci-fi future technology but he meets the guy who's in charge and it's nobunaga again and mind you the reason why you're not sure if it's actually like future tech or aliens is because they're in space so it's not just like nobunaga having knowledge it is also like outside forces involved in this but that's never really clarified i should emphasize this now so now you know the driving force for nobunaga loss so we come back to like the next day and we see that shishimaru found out about the fellow ninja that was supposed to be the spy on janai and he's pissed because they knew that this guy was probably gonna die in this mission he's like you just sacrifice one of your own you don't care you don't have a heart and the argument comes up is like he had a mission he followed through with his mission there's no shame in that and there's nothing wrong with that purpose shishimaru takes offense to this and decides to take on janai on his own and he sets up a trap like in the grass fields while janai is walking and he takes a uh an extra character with him who i guess is like the ninja version of a ninja in training he doesn't really do anything special he's just like he's like really supportive of shishimaru he has faith that he's like really skilled and he's like this short little pudgy guy and he just does like the little grunt work so when janai is walking in the fields this little pudgy dude is like this is all i can do for you and he lights the grass and tosses this canister into the grass which causes some new smoke to come out and then that's when like shishimaru is trying to taunt janai into a battle and pretending to be a ghost while he's attacking janai turns to him and he goes you're a weak ninja you think you're special and you call this magic and he's like why are you laughing and he's like because you're stupid all you did was rub some marijuana onto a barley and you lit it up thinking that this will make me hallucinate you're an idiot and then he turns around and they start fighting and you can easily tell Janai has the upper hand. He's like wrecking him. Shishimaru does have one other trick up his sleeve where he lures Janai into like this pool of oil and he lights it on fire and he thinks that's enough to kill Janai. So while they're kind of celebrating, Janai walks out of the fire like it's nothing, kills the fat little dude, and he's about to kill Shishimaru when the old man sets off like a flashbang grenade and takes Shishimaru out of the picture. Chennai walks off and Shishimaru is kind of pissed that he got rescued by this old man who said he would protect him. The old man explains to Shishimaru later on that it's not that the other ninjas have no heart. It's just that they value the mission and they understand the importance of the mission. Their village was attacked by Chennai before Shishimaru's and they lost their families and they lost their parents. So they know the loss all too well, but they also understand the importance of their mission and what it is to protect the others. Now from there, we cut to the remaining ninjas that are tasked with killing Janai. They actually sneak into his home, which is like this castle, and they try to use poison darts on him and they stab him in his sleep. Uh, this doesn't work too well for them because he plays dead and then he wakes up uh, getting ready to kill them. And before he could kill them all shishimaru shows up now less aggro i would say more a little bit trying to be smooth and cocky and still taunting janai though and when you think that they're in over their heads one of the ninjas 
knock over a candle and start setting off a chain of explosion. And they call it ninja magic, Coda style uh, running flaming dragon. And they explain it's just rapid explosions coming back to back, which I find is funny because it's just a tra- it's just a trap. And they're like ninja magic. Yes. Either way, obviously it doesn't stop deny. He's still chasing after him. They go into a, like an underground tunnel. He's still on their tails. They're still laying down trap after trap. He's just pile driving through them. And it gets to a point where even the old man tries to slow him down. And he's using like this net to, you know, keep Janai at bay. And he's just working over the old man. And he does like a sacrificial move where he literally has these straps of dynamite on him. And he explodes them to try either kill or slow him down. It doesn't kill Janai, but it does knock off his head. Like the entire cave comes down and his head is just laying there. And everybody thinks maybe this is it. How can he exist just as a head? Janai's body comes up and he puts the head back on. He's like, I'm still here. And he kills one of the ninjas. He's like, why can't you put yourself together? Why can't, why do you still die? He, you could tell at this point, like Janai is not quite right in his mind at this point. He, he's He's a one-man mission. And after he kills this ninja, he continues to chase after the others. The others do have a head start, so they get out of the cave first. And they set up one more trap. But they're like, we need a person to be bait. Shishimaru, of course, first in line. He's like, I'll take that job. So when Chennai comes out, he's like, you cowards. You can't stand. Fight me like a man. Shishimaru is like, I never ran. I've been waiting on you. And they start going at it. Head to head fighting up toe to toe at one point he starts running and Janai thinks that he's running away from him and it was all a ploy to trick him for another explosive trap uh, where they're essentially collapsing the cliff of a mountainside onto Janai and this time they actually did some damage because when he comes out of the rubble you can tell he's got you exposed metallic machinery he's lost an arm and like he's just wrecked and one of the ninjas is like it's some kind of machine and as uh, the ninja mentions this Janai spits like this fire from his mouth and burns the ninja alive and he explains well you guys did it you made me spit fire that's a sign that you know my core is ruptured and i'm gonna die but when i die i'm gonna explode and when that happens it's gonna be like the mountain giving birth to a planet you're all going to die with me Shishimaru jumps in trying to hold him back so everybody can escape and Janai's like there's no escape and he his head pops off and starts chasing down the other ninjas and does like a laser eye trick to start blowing up ninjas and then the head comes back to the body so Shishimaru is still fighting him and at one point he loses his arm his right arm and when you think Shishimaru is gonna die one of the other ninjas grabs Janai's sword because he had two so he grabs his spare sword and he throws it to Shishimaru who is now gonna fight with his left hand now you should know Shishimaru is ambidextrous because you do see him fight with two swords throughout this uh, entire series so it's not going to be far-fetched but he does cut through the same sword that Janai is using and through the entire half of Janai and Janai's last words I believe were doesn't matter if you kill me you're gonna die and he wasn't lying because as soon as he cut through him they, he exploded and you see like this massive explosion where it, like eradicates everything in the area but miraculously uh, Shishimaru and two other ninjas are in like a meadow somewhere and Shishimaru has his arm back and he's looking up as he wakes up and he sees like these three energy beings for lack of a better term hovering right over him and they explain to him that they have purpose for him and they want him to live and they want to work together to stop Nobunaga and set things right and he asks them uh wait who are you guys and they go call us black lion and they like disappear and you see like what looks to be like a spaceship and you get a small bit of narrative from the old man that was working on the computer and he says that the black lion will continue to work with shishimaru and they will continue to have more adventures and they will give him more adjustments not only giving him his arm back but they'll always give him a little bit more of a push to continue on and be more successful each time. And then that's when it cuts off. That's it. So yeah, that was a very short film. Uh, For those of you who skipped the recap, I would say the synopsis of that film is it's set during the time of Japan, like around 1580, where there's a lot of conflict and war. And basically ninjas versus a Terminator 
slash Punisher slash Samurai. That's it. That's that's the majority of your sword. And do you need more? I don't know. <laughs> So on to the actual review of this film. As far the animation, I actually love the animation. I, it, it was pretty detailed. It was graphic, so it's not for kids. Uh, there will be blood. There will be guts. It's not really anything for nudity or sexuality. It's just if you don't want your kids having to deal with uh, blood and guts and cussing, then it's not going to be for them. If you don't care about that, then you don't. That's okay. Now uh, the a- animation style was very smooth. It was definitely set around that time frame for the the artwork it wasn't like with like the smooth animation that we deal with now with computer generation uh computer graphics but it is definitely detailed enough that you wouldn't care you can watch it in an entertaining manner just fine the audio though that's where i would say this was hurting a little bit more sound score didn't really vibe with me too much uh it didn't really stand out granted it's it the movie goes by super quick so you're not really paying attention to the background music. Uh, so it, it could have been that I'm more focused on the action rather than the audio. But at the same time, because I didn't notice the audio, that tells me it whatever sound score they were giving wasn't enhancing the feeling of the film for me. And the dub, that is, for lack of a better term, just special. You could tell there were some actors that were kind of phoning it in, or if they were trying, they just weren't trained enough to make themselves sync up or portray the character as well. And then you got ones that were like just hamming it up. You're like your main character. He just yelled out everything, just aggressively yelled. And I understand he's trying to emote, but it just seems like so aggressive more than it needs to be. And then even our villain, who was essentially one note, him, you can tell like very one uh, line kind of character. He's just like ninja and just just sticks with that. But you can tell that he's having fun doing that. Like the as he's enjoying just saying the one lines or the the few words that he's saying it is it's you can get that sense so the main villain's character's dialogue i love even though it's the cheesiest and uh like just not intelligent dialogue i actually enjoyed his dialogue and then let's talk about this story the biggest detriment to the movie was the story in general it felt like they wanted to do a whole lot more than what they had time for it's an action film but a sci-fi film and a period piece possibly a supernatural film and uh, they're tagging in all these little nuanced things that they don't have time to flesh out you get no background to a lot of characters you get no background for the purpose or the driving reason for the story other than one aspect for the main villain but there's another villain in the background so you don't understand why that other villain is doing his purposes so it just leaves you asking more questions especially by the end, the way they end it makes it feel like there's supposed to be a continuation or kind of gives you the sense that there's going to be a sequel, which for me, if I watch a project, I'll watch a movie, anime or not, I've never been a fan of leaving an open ending with the intent of portraying that there's supposed to be more to the story. Like they're going to go into a sequel unless they plan to do a sequel. Now, I understand projects fail and they can't continue, but this did not and granted uh, i haven't done too much research but from what i know there was no plan on doing a sequel to this now as for my rating on this film i'm gonna give it two out of five nerd tots now i'm rating it that for your average viewer if you're not an anime fan and you're looking to get into uh, projects for uh, anime this will be a fun movie to watch just for the action not for the dialogue and you know the animation will be there but if you just want to have something playing in the background that you can notice for the action every now and then, that'd be there. But it's not going to entertain everybody and it's not definitely not going to get you hooked into anime. Now, if you like cheesy dialogue and you love the violence and uh, the action of 80s transition into early 90s, then you may go for a, like a level three. And I'm going generously with that for anime fan of the classic, but I'm comfortable with a level two. Now, to be honest, I watched this on YouTube. Uh, you may be able to find this on Blu-ray or DVD, but I haven't found it on a streaming network, at least not as of yet, as at this time of video. That may change later down the line. I will say again, it's a fun movie. It's just not up there on my rating scale. If you disagree with me, by all means, let me know. Type it in the comments below. If you like this choice of movie, 
or if you're a fan of Go uh, Nagai, let me know which of his next projects you want me to see, and I'll check it, check it out. I will preface, uh, I do know some of his works are a little bit more rated on the tense side for certain reasons. So if you're going to send one that way, I may not look at it. If you're a Go Nagai fan, you'll know what I mean. Other than that, uh, I want to be able to watch movies that anybody can watch, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We have more content coming this way. I'm still doing this, so if you guys like me doing it with the close mic on my face, please let me know. Otherwise, as always, continue watching anime, expand your mind, and just be excellent. Let's go!